Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how you can create these little circle burst animations inside of Adobe After Effects. Now, these really spice up motion graphics projects and they're very easy to create. They're also extremely dynamic and versatile. You can quickly edit them to get different looks. So let's take a quick step-by-step -step look at how to create a few of these. Okay, so I'm inside of After Effects here. The first thing I want to do is create my circle shape. So I'm going to grab the shape tool, select ellipse, I'm going to turn the fill off. I only want the stroke option here. I'm going to turn that to solid color. Uh, it's set to white color and 30 pixel width. That's fine. Now I'm going to hold the shift key as I drag, so constrain the proportions. I'm going to release. And now one thing that's important is you want this anchor point at the center. It might not default to the center. You may need to adjust your preferences. Go to general. And there's a preference here that says center anchor point in new shape layers. So that's set to on for me. It might not be defaulted. If it's not and your anchor point is off somewhere, you can simply grab the layer and select layer, transform, center anchor point and layer content. So now why is this important? Well, when you start animating it, it's gonna animate uh, with that anchor point as the center. So if your anchor point's over here, it's not gonna perfectly scale up from the center. So now that I have the anchor point where I want it, I'm gonna grab my shape layer and center it with this align tool to my composition. Okay, now I'm ready to animate. Let me quickly rename this layer um, circle burst. Okay, now this thing is prepped and ready for animation. Now to animate these, it's really, really simple. You only need to animate two attributes and that's the stroke width and the scale. Basically, this is gonna scale up while the stroke width goes down, giving you this burst and it's gonna disappear at the same time. So I'm gonna open up the ellipse here now we don't need this fill, so I'm gonna delete this property because it's just kind of confusing and cluttered. So first I'll edit the scale. Now it's important to edit the scale in this transform option here and not the master transform of the actual shape because we wanna actually scale it after it's animated and we don't wanna mess anything up. And if there's keyframes on that, we're not gonna be able to scale it easily. So we'll do the animation on this scale attribute. And we want this to be one second in length, so I've added a marker here as to where the animation ends just to help give me a visual reference. So I'm gonna bring my playhead here. I'm gonna add a scale keyframe. Then I'm gonna bring it to the first frame, switch that to zero. So now my circle is animating up. Now I'm gonna go over to stroke. We have stroke width here. I'm gonna to go to the end, add a keyframe. And since we wanted to start at 30, I'm just gonna grab this 30 keyframe, bring it to the beginning, holding shift. Now I'll bring it down to zero. And let's take a look at what we got. Okay, so we have a basic circle burst, but it's not looking very good. It's looking pretty terrible, actually, this animation. So now we need to, you know, kind of adjust the timing of this animation. To clean things up on the interface here, we don't want to look at all these properties that we're not using. I can hit the U key and it's going to show us the only the attributes that are keyframed. So now to make this a little bit better, I'm going to grab the first two keyframes and add an easy ease out. I'm gonna grab the last two keyframes and add an easy ease in. Then I'm gonna to go to the graph editor and make sure that, well, make sure that I have both of these. And I'm gonna change the speed here so that it's going very fast at the beginning and then it slows down. So it kind of burst on and then slowly slows down there. I'm gonna turn the graph editor off. Now let's take a look at this animation. Okay, so there we have a circle burst. I told you it's extremely easy to create. So I could just stop right here, but I'm gonna show you how these are dynamic and how we can kind of get a different look. So I'm gonna press U, and then I'm gonna duplicate this circle burst, Command D. I'm gonna bring this one down, turn the visibility of the first one off. Now let's rename this. We'll call this one circle burst dots. I'm gonna open this up, show you how we can give you a different look here. I'm gonna open up the stroke, and if you look down here, you'll see there's dashes. Now, if I hover over the plus button here, it says add a dash or gap. So if I hit plus, it's gonna change these to dashes. If I hit plus again, it's gonna add a gap attribute. Now I'm not liking the square look. So to change that, I can change the line cap to round cap. I'm gonna set the dash to zero. Okay, that's looking pretty good, but I need to change the gap to, let's say 65. Okay, very good, now let's take a look. Okay, and you can see how quick that was just to customize that. So now let's go back. So I have two circle bursts here now, two different looks. Now let's see how we can incorporate these in an actual animation. 
Well, over here, I've already animated a text. This is a three second animation, one second where it animates in, and it's looking quite boring. It's just a scale and a rotation right now. So we can add these little circle burst elements to spice this up. Now, as you saw in the example, one of the first things we had was two large circle bursts, the dotted ones just behind the background. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna grab these two, copy them, bring them into this master comp here, bring them underneath the text, and make them fit the length of the composition here because this is three seconds. Now, I have the visibility of the first one off, but I have my dots active. So if we look at this, you see it's already looking kind of in place, but I wanna make some adjustments here. First, I'm gonna add some motion blur. Then we can scale it up. And I'm gonna hit U so we can see the keyframes. Now we want it to start a little bit later, so let's see how this looks. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Now let's just play this back. Okay, that's looking good. To make, uh, to make it a little more dynamic, I'm just gonna duplicate this, we'll make two. And this one will be bigger and last longer. So I'm gonna hit the U key. We want this one to last almost the whole length. And maybe it'll come up before. Let's just see how that looks. So maybe if they come at the same time, that's looking good. Okay, now I'm gonna lock these off and now I'm gonna use this other circle burst. I'm gonna add these circle burst elements, just a few on the edges of these letters here. So now this first one, I'm gonna turn on the visibility. Now I wanna put it right over the E here, right on the edge. I'm gonna scale it down, make it small. Now I want this to stick to the text, so I'm gonna grab the pick whip and stick it to my text layer. Also, just to see what's going on, I'm gonna change the label color to pink so we're not accidentally getting lost with our other circle burst here. And we want this, it starts way too early. We want, it to, we want this particular circle burst to start right when, it, when the text kind of slows down. So to do that, I'm gonna grab this circle burst, hit U. We can see the keyframes. We want that keyframe to be right about here. So now if I scrub through, that's looking better. Now, all I need to do is simply duplicate and move these. So now I'm gonna hit Command D, duplicate. I'm gonna put this one down here on the edge of the E. And I'm gonna, actually let's put it down here. I'm gonna scale it up, make this one nice and big. Duplicate again, put this one on the B. Now the, the beauty of this is these are all, since they're duplicates, they're still linked to this text. So make this one even a little bit bigger. Command D again bottom, make this one smaller. And just to change it up a little bit, I'm gonna hit the U key, and I'm gonna change the stroke width of the first frame here. I'm gonna take it way up high to 100, just so this particular circle burst looks a little bit different. Now I'm gonna grab all of these, and now what we wanna do is I'm gonna hit the U key, so we can see what's going on here. Now these are all in place, but they all come up at the same time, which is not too cool. I mean, if that's the look you're going for, that's cool but I wanna stagger these. So I'm gonna move some of these just a little bit. And I want these to be up longer. So I just need to move the ending keyframes here. Okay, and once these are in place, you can hit the U key again. Now, let's take a look at our animation. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Obviously, I could retime some of this and make things last a little bit longer, but you can you get the gist here of how you can quickly customize these. You can quickly create these little elements to really make it a lot more dynamic. In fact, I want to I would want to turn down the opacity of these because the text is white and these are white. So you you could just go kind of crazy with these little elements, and it's not limited to just circles. You could make triangles, squares, whatever you want. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality, royalty-free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.